Thank you so much for joining me today. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, for those who haven't had a chance to meet you, Alex, can you share with, with everyone your name, your company name, and where you guys are located? Yeah, my name is Alex Sikowitz. Um, I am at My Council Plumbing, and that is located in North San Jose, really in good. California. Very good. And what's your what's your role with them? I'm a field advisor, and we're talking for a great reason. You've uh, you've had a great first three years with them. Uh, another great year, you know, last year especially. It's time to brag. Share with everyone uh, your sales totals over the last few years. My first year, um, it was about eight months. I did three million. The next year, I did four point two million, and then this last twenty twenty three, I did a little over four. That's amazing. Where were you, where are you uh, targeting this year so far? I know it's early in the year. Uh, right now, I'm tracking a little over four. How much are you tracking your numbers, day by day, week by week? I look at it almost every single day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there, there's a little bit of competition we got. So yeah, you got a lot of. Yeah, I was gonna say you got a lot of A plus players at my council. Yeah, what's that like? What's that like? You know, we are all good friends. You know, it's all friendly competition. Yeah. Nobody tries to get over on anybody else. It's it's really great yeah. game we got. Yeah. So we all help help each other out, you know? Right. So. You got great leadership, too. I mean, I'm not... Oh, my gosh. Yeah. A family forever. They're just yeah. the sweetest people. They are. Yeah. Mike and Brenda and Sean. Yeah. And then Patty as a gentleman. Patty, right? Patty's super helpful yeah. and pull this together. Yeah. Yeah. Great, great leadership. Just a great family to work for, you know? And very humble caring right good family yeah they're legit people yeah very good well i want to learn about your sales process but before we do i love learning people's stories and how they got to where they are today so let's start with you i know uh you weren't always in the bay area correct correct yeah i was born and raised in poland um i came here when i was about 12 years old and uh, learned the language and yeah there you go and so you graduate high school and then what was what was the next step for you high school then i, I tried college okay Multiple times. <laughs> it was, you know, a couple of weeks and drop out. A couple of weeks and drop out. You know, just kind of trying to find my way. Sure. Yeah. Very good. So what So what kind of work did you start doing then? I got into retail. I mm -hmm. uh, worked for Kelly Moore Paints for about five years. I was a manager for three. Mm -hmm. Just kind of moved up the ranks from begin from the bottom up. Uh, they got into the car business. Mm -hmm. um, sold cars for a couple of years. Then finance, finance director and a sales manager for another seven, eight years. Yeah. Um, and then plumbing. Yeah. So why the transition from cars to, to plumbing? What was wrong with the auto business? Um, other than uh, no outside life, <laughs> um, I have uh, three amazing kids. Oh, nice. And it was rough. You know, working in a car business, uh, getting up before they wake up, coming home when they're asleep, right? Yeah. And that went on for, for a while. And I, I wanted to I wanted to get out of that car business for a long time, but it's very difficult. I want you because you can make good money doing it, right? right? So, especially with no degree, there was really. It was I thought it was impossible to get out of it, you know. Right till other opportunities showed up. So right, and as soon as they did, I I got out. Yeah. So who introduced you to this idea that you can make good money in plumbing? I had a friend that I've known for many many years. Um, he was working for a plumbing company in San Jose. Mm -hmm. He said you can make good money doing sales. These are kind of the hours. And I'm like, well, give it a shot. Yeah. And that was kind of it. And worked there for about a year and a half, maybe two years. Kind of learned to trade a little bit. Yeah. They kind of threw you into it too, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> One week with somebody driving. And then after that, it was... You were an expert. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> no, definitely right. not. I was... Uh, I was just kind of thrown to the wolves. It was it was frustrating. Sure, I can tell you, um, this company did not offer training like my council does. Yeah, um, and you just kind of learn as you go, and you're on the phone asking questions and YouTubing stuff. It right. was just kind of embarrassing, mm -hmm. you know, in the beginning. But if you can get through that, you know, they'll kind of strengthen you up a little bit. So. Yeah. So, what? How did you get to my council? Um, I wanted to get into actual sales. I was a technician there, and I was promised over and over and over, and I kept getting passed up, passed up. And I just had it, mm. and I just, uh, okay. I just I just had enough. I just felt like they weren't, you know, keeping their promises. I gave them three chances yeah. at it, and I just kept going. I was one of the top guys there every single month. I was in the top three every single month, and just wasn't getting the opportunity. Well, so I just got frustrated, and I yeah. just left. So you didn't have a spot with my council yet. You just like, I'll get it out. 
Yep. Okay. Yep. So how did you find them then? Uh, LinkedIn. Oh, was there? Yeah. yeah, I had my resume on there, and they reached out to me. Genevieve, our recruiter. Yeah. Uh, she uh, she gave me a call, asked to for, come in for an interview. Yeah. I had a couple of interviews lined up with other companies. I was going to go into tech sales. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, yeah, once I met Genevieve and then Patty and then Sean, I just knew it was the right fit. Mm-hmm. It was like no question. Well, what about those interviews with, with all of them that resonated with you? Um, you know, they they saw value in me and the, the resume and and that that meant a lot. You know, um, they they gave me an offer right there and then. Mm-hmm. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I didn't know I was going to pick my counselor first, right? Um, like I said, I had a bunch of interviews lined up for other other companies. But then I spoke with Patty, and and um, she said, why don't you talk to Sean, Sean Council? I'm like, okay. And as soon as I talked to Sean, I mean, minutes in, I knew. Yeah. It was, we just clicked. We were right off the bat. Right. Uh, so I, I already knew. You were, you were in. I was in. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And that's, I said, you, you talk to Sean and, and Mike, the Brenda, they're, they're just, they, yeah. they connect with you. They've got the ability. ability. That's great. All right. So you, you, you take this job mm-hmm. and then what's the onboarding look like? I mean, obviously, you know, sales, but they have a certain way they want things done. Right. Absolutely. So you, you have a sales license right in California. Um, a home sales license, I believe it's called. I already had that because I was trying, I got that at the other company. So they're pretty excited that I had it because you can't go out there and sell about it. Sure. Right? And so they're pretty excited. I had about two weeks of training as far as the process mm-hmm. that I um, I rode with a couple other guys just to learn the process and the book and, uh, and the price book and all that, just kind of how things work. Right. Um, and then May, just before May 1st of 2020, no, 21, mm-hmm. 21, I went on my own, right? Um, they gave me an installer to follow me around, you know, and then we just kind of went from there. Yeah. And start figuring it out. It took me about a month mm-hmm. to really, on my own, to kind of figure things out and then start rolling. Sure. Yeah. But after that. Oh, yeah. It's been real, all down the hill. <laughs> um, you know, four million dollars a lot. Now, even in the Bay Area, it's a lot of it's a lot of money in plumbing. What types of calls do you typically get sent on? Um, typical service calls. It doesn't. It could be um, a leak at a faucet, garbage disposal, angle stop. Um, sometimes it's a backup drain, backup right of some sort. It it it, it doesn't matter. Anything plumbing related, even gas, right? So people want to run a gas line to a barbecue. Or, mm-hmm. Or they shut off because PG&E shut it off, or just any any anything like that, anything plumbing related yeah. type of service call, and it's all residential. Right. Okay. So yeah, I just want want people to know that for sure. Yeah. So all right, let's dig into your process a little bit. Uh, you get dispatched to a call. Um, how do you prepare for it? You know, what is there any research you do about the home? How do you get yourself mentally right? What's your approach? Not too much. I try not to look into it too much. Okay. Um, I think. If if I try to, because I've done that, I try to look into it too much, a lot, right? Start reading into it, um, and I get a very like single minded almost when I go there, right? Because I already have this judgment of, of what I'm getting into. Yeah. So I actually try to keep it more of an open mind, just to see, okay, this is kind of what it's for. This is where it's at. Oh, there's an H to home. Cool. Yeah. That that's it. That's I, I really don't look into it any further than that. Okay. Um, and as far as prep, as I'm driving there, you know, just just um, relax. Yeah. May, uh, go through the process in my head um, of what we, how we get trained as far as from approaching the, the home um, to, let's see, complimenting client, right, putting booties on, smile. Yeah. Um, just make sure I have all that. Sure. By the time I get to the house. So that's all I think about. Well, the rest, it depends on the client, right? Right. Right. So you, you mentioned training. So I got to stop and ask, you guys are a big training company. Huge. So what does that look like? How often are you training? What, you know, what kind of content are you training on? What does that look like? Sure. So Monday's the only day we don't. Have to train. Sure. Um, it starts on Tuesday from 730 to 8. All training is half an hour. So it keeps us all awake. 
you know, nobody's falling asleep. Um, I think half an hour is like a perfect time. Mm -hmm. You go over that, you just start nodding out. So anyway, the first, on Tuesday, it's more, it's on Zoom. Everybody, the whole company is on it. Okay. The whole field team, everybody, right? Um, and it's basically just update on what's going on. If there is, sometimes we go over some numbers, you know, end of the month. Um, we'll go over maybe any issues that came up during the week somebody had. Just to get all on the same page. Right. It's not much of a training as far as just everybody getting on the same page. Touch point. Yeah. Touch points. Yeah. yeah. Like three, four different things, you know, that we just touch on. And that's it. You know, keep it short and sweet. On Wednesdays, all the technicians and field advisors. Uh, we get into a lot of the customer service part of it. Yeah. Uh, and the sales training. Um, and some role play sometimes. Stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Thursday, one of our field advisors, he uh, teaches a contract class. Oh, so the, all the technicians that are that want to become technicians, all the installers that want to become technicians, or new technicians, right? So he teaches them how to fill out the contract properly and any other little things, you know, that just to get it started. Yeah, yeah more details. Um, and Friday is a lot of um, technical training. Uh, so we'll pick a subject, either it's the water heaters or power vents or softeners or something basic you know yeah but there's always a topic and that's 30 minutes as well so yeah so you're, we're all up to date we're all taught the same thing the same way yeah so it's uniform it's 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 good that's great i mean training's important yes it keeps you sharp support for this podcast comes from moen as the number one faucet brand in north america moen offers a diverse selection of thoughtfully designed kitchen bath and smart water security products each delivering the best possible combination of meaningful innovation, useful features, and lasting value. Moen strives to be the most durable, reliable, and easy-to-install brand of faucets. Moen leans on pros to help continue to drive consumer innovation and influence Moen's engagement with consumers in a meaningful way. For more information, visit plumber.moen.com. Support for this podcast comes from HD Supply. At HD Supply, our job is helping you do yours. We are uniquely positioned to help drive your business through unrivaled access to professional-grade plumbing, electrical, and HVAC products, and innovative business solutions such as our StockWise Inventory Management Program, fully customizable to meet your needs and improve productivity. Our national network of distribution centers and more than 2,200 store locations nationwide provide a national reach with a local focus, providing unmatched convenience and product availability. We power pros to do more. All right, so you get to the call, pull up, you know, you do all the right things. You walk up there, knock on the door, smile open, let you in. Uh, it's so important to, to make that connection with the homeowner, right? Absolutely. So what, what are some things you do to break the ice, to kind of understand who you're dealing with, maybe get to read their body language, what kind of personality they have? So mm -hmm. what's your approach? I mean, it starts with the hello. You know, I come in there and just with a smile on my face, energy, and just say, hi, how are you? I'm Alex. Um, you are what, Matt or whatever, you know, whatever is on the call. And sometimes it is, sometimes it's not, you know, yeah. maybe as a child or whatever, but then I kind of know who I'm talking to. Right. Um, and I can just read a personality right there, yeah. just without, without how they answer, right? A lot of the times they're just kind of like, oh, hi, you know, yeah, yeah, come in, you know. So I'm like, yeah, what's going on? You know, how can I help you today? What's what's a, seems to be the problem? And they're like, oh, okay, follow me this way. And as, as I'm following them to whatever the problem might be, mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll look around the house, right? And if something I want to compliment on or want to ask about for it, um, I see a painting or something, you know, or maybe the kitchen's been remodeled, yeah, you know, you know or anything, sure, anything to where I can see the customer might be proud of something, right? Where they open up. Mm -hmm. Um, and as I'm walking to it, I'm having this conversation, right? Sometimes people, most of the time people open up and we'll talk about it. We'll just stop all of a sudden, right? And we never even get into the problem yet. Right. And now we're having this 30 minute conversation. I don't even know what's going on yet. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the best. Yeah. That's you don't best. rush that. You let them know. Nah, yeah. Just let it flow. Mm -hmm. You know, however it goes. Yeah. Um, definitely don't want to rush that because the building a relationship is key. I think that's what makes me the most successful is building that relationship. Right. People buy from who they like and who they trust. Right. Right. Um, so that's once we've built that, 
you know, walking up to the problem. And I, then I just asked a lot of questions. Okay. So let's say it's like a running toilet, you know, maybe it's a bad flapper or something. Yeah. So what kind of questions are you asking to understand, you know, more about the problem, what they're looking for in their plumbing? What, what do you like to ask? I ask questions like, has this happened before? Right. Or how long has this been happening? When did you notice it? Um, is anything else affected? Do you have, do you see any other issues at other bathrooms? Um, you know, um, I will look in the tank and I'll ask, you know, there's a, maybe there's a lot of sediment. Do you have a water filtration system? Then I start asking a lot of these questions, right? That people, it's like going to a doctor's office, right? They ask you a lot of questions before they actually d look at the problem, right? Right. You have to go through the blood pressure and get your, you know, your height and ask questions before you even see the doctor, right? Right. It's kind of the same thing, mm -hmm. right? Um, you're, and you learn a lot about a person. Right. I think key, big key for me is I just listen. And I ask a question and I shut up. I just, I let him talk yes. as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, people will tell you how to sell. So you're not, you're not doing any repairs, right? You're purely giving them options on something. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I have it, like I said, I have an installer with me, right? Right. Um, and he comes in with me. Okay. Automatic. Okay. So he's with me the whole time. Okay. Um, I don't leave him in the truck beforehand. Right. And, um. So in this case, so for example, this running toilet, will you give a, a homeowner, say, some options on how to fix that problem right now, and then will you do the safety, your your inspection, or do you like to do your inspection all kind of at once after you look at the initial problem, and then you, you kind of find a way to, to talk about the inspection? What What's your process? Let's see, this depends on the call and what it's involved. Let's say we're talking about the toilet, right? And I see there's more issues and there's just a flapper, you know, stuff is rusted out. Now I have more options to give. I have for a total rebuild or possibly even a new toilet, right? Um, it, you know, I'll check the faucet also, you know, since I'm in the bathroom, I'll, I'll turn things on. I see the pressure is really high, you know, we'll go check the water pressure. Then when we're in a water heater all of a sudden, right? So we start getting into it more before I even give options. So real quick, let's slow down and see the magic right. there. So you see that water pressure is really high. People don't. They're like, I don't want to just turn it on water. It's great. Yeah, they love it. Yeah, yeah. All right. right, right. So what do you say to go, hey, I need to check your water pressure elsewhere in your home. How do you explain why you need to start walking through their home? Well, faucets and I, I just don't know. Faucets and fixtures are rated up to, you know, usually around 80 PSI. Right, anything over that could start causing failures and, and gaskets and, and whatnot. So, um, we want to make sure that doesn't. It's not over that, right? So it prevents future costly repairs or replacements. And you know, people are obviously open to that. Yeah, but they don't want to pay more for things later. So we check it and we go from there, right? And of course, then that leads to the water heater. Do they have an expansion tank, right? And um, then I see the age of the water heater, and then I can ask questions: Have you maintained it? It just kind of starts rolling, right? right? Well, yeah, let's dig, let's dig it a little. I don't want to say a role play, but you know, again, I'm average Joe homeowner. I know I turn my shower on, I get hot water. I don't I don't think about that thing at all. So all of a sudden, you're you know you're asking what what are some questions you would ask me in that circumstance? Maybe it's a twenty plus year old water. Oh, questions about the water heater itself? Yeah, yeah, just give me think because you're trying to plant seeds that you really should go price this thing, right? Correct. So you got to get me on board to do so. Yeah. So how do you get my my mindset going? I just called you for a, a, a running toilet, and mm -hmm. now we're looking at a water heater, right? So I want to back up a little bit, sure. right? Um, I try not to go any further really than that. I just look at it and take mental note. Okay. Right? Uh, because now we're getting off track too much. Sure. And I don't want to get the customer off track. You know, they call us out for this. Right. Let's handle that. Okay, good. But I'm taking a lot of mental notes as I, as I check things, right? Okay. Um, but I'll let them know. Um, if the, I ask them, is there anything else for me to take a look at? Well, yeah. No, that'll be all. I'm like, okay. So then I'll start writing the options for that specific problem, right? Okay. And we check the water pressure and we talk about that. I'll let them know about that too, right? But first we want to keep it basic. So I'll give them a few options. One option, we face the flapper, um, then rebuild. Internal rebuild, and then a new toilet, right? Right. And I tell the benefits of all three. I let them know, right? It's a 10, 15-year-old toilet, just like anything else that's older. You start replacing parts. You know, and sometimes it's better to get a new one instead of dumping money into something that's old. Sure. Um, and I say it's eight out of ten times that I'll get a new toilet. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, now we're lifting the toilet up, right? So I might install or do that right away, right? And I get him going on that. I stay there. Real, real quick, let me come get Pike and stop there. If, if we're okay, you've got me sold on a new toilet. It makes sense. I'm going to get a new toilet. There's all sorts of toilets, right? So, yes. so how do you give them options on a type of new toilet, or do you not give them options? Um, we just talk about it, right? If there is some, they want something similar, mm-hmm. or do they want a one piece? Do they want a two piece? Do they want to go something more high end? Mm-hmm. Uh, I let them know that the pricing is based on the two piece. Uh, um, good, good toilet, right? Um, which is medium price, like three hundred dollar toilet, right? right? Which is a good toilet. Um, we don't put anything cheap. No. $69 specials. Yeah. You know, everything we put is, is quality. Uh, yeah. How do you talk about it? Cause I, I can go to home Depot and get a toilet for cheap. So yeah. how do you explain how, how much better your materials are? I think you were starting to do that. So how do you kind of d- dive into that a bit? Yeah. We talk about, um, just things lasting longer. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, now, you know, I live in a different market than a lot of people, you know, um, People have more money to spend, usually, yeah. and they want something that lasts. Um, you do run into those clients that just want something cheap in and out. Yeah. But I let them know, you know, if if you want to just do it once and do it right, you know, a lot of people don't want to keep their plumbing coming, plumber coming back every single year or every couple of years to fix something. Right. You know, they don't want to see them for another 10, 20 years. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean- It's an interruption in your schedule. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So- um, I just let them know it's it's a good quality toilet, right? Um, it's gonna it's gonna last you a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do have warranty, you know, we have a one year warranty. If anything happens, um, that's kind of that's kind of where I leave it. Okay. Um, and then people will ask if you know, I'll be like, oh, do you have this? Do I get to choose? I'm like, sure. And then I'll just give them some, you know, we'll go on a website. Okay. Even like a home depot website, even, and then just show them, you know, like, yeah, this is the range kind of where we're at. Yeah. You know. Um. And sometimes they want to go something bigger, right? Then we open that conversation. Okay. But let's say they just do pick whatever I offered. Yeah. You know, um, they sign, they pick that option. Well, I stick it. I don't leave. Okay. Um, even though I'm not doing the work, I'll still talk to them. Uh, my son will go to supply house, get what he needs. Okay. And I'll be hanging out with the client. Oh, um, and we'll just be talking about whatever. So you're not doing an inspection. No, nope. just finding finding ways to. Yeah, we just talk some more. You know, family. You know, that's, that's an easy topic to talk about a lot of the times, right? Yeah, uh, family and kids and whatever else. You know, that's I, I don't know. It's easy for me to talk about all that. So yeah, we'll just talk. He will come back, and um, he'll start removing, and then I'll kind of pause with the client and be like, "Hey, um, he's here." You know, while while I'm here and he's doing this, I can do a, a full safety evaluation for you, you know, while this is going on. Right. At this point, the client is mine, right? Right. Or, I mean, we've got a great conversation. Like, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Check it out. You know, I'll be here. Yeah. I mean, no. I'm not good. I ask to get into the crawl space. I mean, that's really where I want to go. Do you, real quick, before we go to the crawl space, when, you, when you're changing toilets out, will you ever run cameras just to say, to see if there's any kind of drain issues? Hey, while we're removing it, or do you guys not do it? Not yet. Okay. Um, drain does come at some point. Um, and usually when the toilet is lifted and you see the toilet flange, right? If it's rusted, old, or, you know, you got the bolts are not even holding, right? Because it's yeah. all rusted out. Um, but I, I, anytime I go to any house, my goal is to get in the cross. Okay. Yeah. Let's get Period. it. Right. Period. I don't, doesn't really matter what's under your sink. I'm, I'm getting, going under there, right? Sure, sure. And uh, once you establish that rapport and that that relationship, it's it's easy. People are like, yeah, go ahead. And I'll ask him, be like, hey, it was the last time somebody was down there, right? Yeah. And, um, and and it actually checked everything out. Like, oh, you know, and nobody has. Or maybe I had a termite inspection a year ago, right? Yeah. Or, or whatever. Um, but, yeah, they'll open it up. I'll go down there with the camera. At that point, I have my installer stop what he's doing and then run every faucet, every flush, everything, and, you know, right. run all the water everywhere. Yeah. Um, Making notes. Yeah, but now just take pictures, a lot of pictures. Video everything. or all, all pictures? There's some videos. Um, if I see, you know, an active leak, then, I, yeah, I'll take a video of that. Right. Um, um, yeah, and I just check all the system underneath. Uh, 
I'll even look at gas really quick. I try to stick to what they call it. So if it's a drain, anything drain related, I'm going to stick to drains, but I'll keep an eye on the water. But, and I might bring it up to a client, you know, because I don't want them surprised later. Sure. So let me be like, hey, I noticed there is some electrolysis on your copper or some rust coming out of your galvanized water lines. Yeah. The, the gas lines are rusted, but I won't really go too much into that. Just kind of let them be like, hey, I saw some other yeah. you know, concerns. Um, but we'll are you are you documenting all this on a like a written inspection? Do you guys do it digitally? I don't know. So we have home protection plan uh, that we have uh, technicians that go to those calls and they they have a an actual inspection sheet. Right. For this, no, we're just going kind of sticking to. What the call is and kind of. But you're not, you're just met, you're taking pictures, you're not writing anything. No. Out. Okay. All I'm right. just down there and we're cool. also taking pictures of everything. All right. Um, then I'll come out and um, go straight to the client and just go over the pictures and let them know what I saw. Yeah. Um, will, you, will you look at other bad? I mean, for example, this is a toilet. It's a 20 year old toilet. You said, hey, it makes sense to replace it. Mm-hmm. Do you bring up, what, at what point do you bring up, hey, you, you know, if this is 20 years old and you've got two more bathrooms, do you, I mean, Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'll mention that. Yeah. yeah, if it's a toilet, you know, do you have any other one? Well, I'm glad you're okay. looking through this. Yeah, I'll definitely mention that. Um, is that when you mention that? Is that when you sold the first toilet or when you're doing the inspection? No, no, before that. Before that, okay. Yeah, before that. So, you know, when we look at that one, then then I'll ask, is there any other ones you want me to take a look at? Okay, yeah. gotcha. Um, and so but, that way you can look at everything. Yeah, but I don't try to force yeah. anything, right? Right. Um, like I said, the money is in the crawl space. <laughs> All right, so you came up from the crawl space. Go yeah. ahead, walk me through that. Then. Um, yeah, I, I get out, get my crawl suit, um, crawl suit off, and um, I just go to the client. Yeah. You tell them, be like, hey, this is took some pictures. This is what I see underneath. You know, um, if there is any concerns, you know, I'll go over them. I kind of show them, zoom in on certain parts, and let them know. I'll give them some more options. You yeah. know, to uh, to either replace or repair a lot of repipes, I guess. Then a lot of repipes. Yeah, just a lot of just old homes pipes that are original. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. For- you can't get to four million by replacing toilets. I was going to say that's <laughs> why I asked you earlier. I'm like, how are we getting on water heaters and toilets? Yeah, yeah. Water heaters are a good ticket, but yeah. All right. So yeah. So let's say um, you know you've seen, you've looked at. I- I'm like, okay, I- I'm on board with replacing all my toilets. You, you told me the water heaters. Well, at that point, you just kind of planted a seed on the water here, right? I only planted a seed. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, we still want to stick to what the calls for, right? Okay. And then you saw the mess of pipes that's below my house. Yep. So how do we communicate all this stuff to me at this point? Or what's your next step? When, when I'm showing them the pictures, yeah, I let them know. You know the age of it and what's happening. You see this rust on your cast iron, right? And that's coming from the inside out, mm-hmm. the hanging pipes, right? The cast iron is thinning out, and it's, and it's already coming through um sometimes there's leaks right and i show them the video of the leaks um and i was like this is this is something you might want to take care of sooner than later you know especially if you already have sewage coming down you know certain places right people don't don't like that they, they don't want nothing like that you should say the word sewage i'm sure it's like oh exactly right yeah. exactly so i mean we sit down all right everything is done at their table everything all the pricing everything i do and we sit down and start writing different options. Um, if there's some parts that are worse than others, I have options for those. Yeah. Some of the whole system is messed up. Right. Right. There is no repair at this point. I mean, we talk about full replacement. Right. So there's not many options there. But you're still talking just primarily like the, the pipes. We're not doing water heaters or anything at that point. Mm-hmm. Okay. So just the piping issue and all that. The, su- the sewer. At the this sewer. Point, right? Yes. Yeah. Because oh. that's kind of, we're just sticking to one. Okay. All right. Unless everything is just disaster. Right? Sure. Um, then it will bring everything up. But it's usually one is worse than the other. Okay. So we'll stick to the, the worst one. Right. And I give them all the examples. Right. And then, you know, we're sitting down talking about it and um, show them the pricing. You know? Yeah. How many options will you typically give? The three? Four? On the change order mm-hmm. at this point? Mm-hmm. If, if if this whole sword is just there, there's no other option but one. Yeah. Right? And that's the way I look at it. Yeah. I'm just like, I, if I show them a repair, I think they'd be confused. Be like, what do you mean you're going to re- what are, you know? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Right. Um, but if I see 
maybe the toilet flange here and a shower drain here at least but the rest of it is still intact right not great i'd give option for this and this um maybe that and a piece of you know maybe 20 feet of drain pipe you know that's yeah. maybe worse than the other and then a full sewer okay so that's and what your th- options are yep okay um and we stick to that so you build those options you're talking to me about as, are, as you write them are you talking to me about them and why you're building them or do you prefer to build it out write it out and then kind of slide it across and and present it How, what, what do you like to do you know what? It, it, is, it depends on the client. Once again, I've uh, I've said they're trying to write options, and it took me an hour. Yeah, to write three sentences. Yeah, because the customer keeps. It. Oh, <laughs> and you know what? I let it write it down. Yeah, I have that stop writing. Yeah, I you know, just I'm concentrating on that. That's it. Whatever. And all of a sudden they go off topic. Yeah, you know, we're not even talking about plumbing all of a sudden, right? I mean, we're talking about his drain, and now they're talking about something else, right? Yeah, whatever. What do right. you talk about? Great right. talk. Um, so yeah, the boss. You know, I don't. I don't rush it. Right. Um, at all. And uh, a lot of guys tell me that wrote with me. They're like, once I write it out and give them an option, forty thousand dollar option to rebuy. Like, okay, well, it's got to get done. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Like, and the guys that wrote with me, they're like, I don't get it. Like, how? How did this just happen? Right. Yeah. And it happens because you build that relationship that that you build that rapport, right? Right. Um, and people just trust you, and they know it's got to get done. They don't even want to shop around at this point. They don't yeah. care. Yeah. Yeah. And so you took all that away. Right. All these possible objections are taken away. Yeah. As you build that. Right. Friendship. Support for this podcast comes from Amana. Amana Brand is a premium brand from Daikin, the world's number one indoor comfort solutions company, with over twenty thousand employees in North America alone. Originating eight decades ago, the Amana brand is synonymous with long-lasting premium quality products. Chances are you and generations before you have enjoyed the dependable performance and longevity that the Amana brand continues to deliver. Today, Amana brand systems like the new S-Series Site Discharge System with Inverter Technology are manufactured with high-quality materials and innovative technologies. The unique design and excellent energy-efficient performance of the S-Series is a fraction of the size of other Amana brand systems. Because of its slim design, it's easy to transport and install. The Amana brand S-Series system is available in AC, heat pump, and dual fuel configurations. Every Amana brand indoor comfort product is built to our highest standards. The S-Series is no different. Take comfort with its 10-year parts and lifetime unit replacement limited warranties. For more information on the Amana S-Series, follow the Amana brand on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So, I mean, obviously some people push back a little bit. Like, yeah, so what happens? You go, Alex, this is a lot of money. I didn't expect this. I thought I had you come out and you know, replace my flapper and gonna call it a day. It was yeah. a few hundred bucks. So yep. how do you how do you handle those those you know, push back? And I tell them, you know what? That's most of the time how it happens. Mm. It always starts with something small, mm. right? Um, I th- I tell them, you know, the issue with a lot of people in the industry is they don't go any further. They'll change this out for you, and then you come again, and you change something else, then they change something else, and then you're just throwing that money away every single time. Yeah, when it could be just done right the first time, right? Right. And with us, we do a thorough evaluation, a safety check of everything, mm-hmm. and. So it's a one-time thing, and most of my clients—that's how it happens. Always a call for something small. Yeah, right. But and we can just fix this if you want. I mean, we can do just that. Um, but no, this is what you have under there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I agree. It is a lot of money. That this is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> that's just that's, that's right. Yeah. Right. You you don't do any pitching like, hey, we've been my council plumbing's been around for X many years. I've been doing this for a long time. You don't try to put a sales pitch. You just rely on a relationship you've built. A really relationship, yeah. And, you know, a lot of that stuff has come up. Yeah. I do talk about the company through our conversations. Mm. Like, it's all the We even it all in, yeah. Yeah, it all happens at some point, right? So they know. Because I always ask them, like, how did you hear about us? Right. That's one of the first questions I ask, actually, when I get in there. Is how did you hear about us? Right. You know, if it's the neighbor, like you see our saw trucks everywhere, or it was angel list, or mm. whatever it might be. And that tells me a lot, too about the client mm-hmm. right if it's a referral from somebody else oh you did my parents house oh that's golden right? 
Um, sometimes you have uh, like an Angie's List call where there is multiple plumbers coming out. Right. You, you know there's multiple. Then I'll hit more on our company. Yeah. Even more so. Right. Right. So it kind of depends where the lead is coming from as well and mm -hmm. how much they know about it. So, right. Right. Yeah. So it all really, there's so many, there's no straight line process. Yeah. Everything, every customer is a little different. Right. Every, every, but I try to always go back to these, you know, to hitting all these stats. Checkpoints. Checkpoints. Yeah. yeah. Right. Wow. The, sure. Sure. Yeah. Internally, you know, I need to, I need to weave this. I need to mention that. Yeah. How about like, you know, your guarantees? I mean, we're talking about a $40,000 job, right? I want some reassurance. This isn't going to be, you know, an issue in a year or two because something wasn't sealed properly. Right. So, oh yeah. Yeah, what what are your guarantees? How do you differentiate yourself? Yeah, we have a forty year warranty on our repipes, mm -hmm. if it's sewer, gas, or water. Um, and I let them know any issues, any work we done for the next forty years, you know, it is covered. Mm -hmm. It is we come out here quickly, um, and that's that's another big selling point. You know, we do have eighty trucks. Mm -hmm. um, our you talk to a live person right away when you call. Um, and they'll get somebody out there really quick, you know. If it's something we did and it's a warranty type of call, somebody's coming out really fast, right? Within twenty four hours, yeah. You know, um, and you don't get that with a lot of places, right? Because they're busy, they're booked up, you right. know. Um, we're busy too, but we have more options. You know, we can pull a person from here or there just to, sure, just to help something out, sure. So, it's almost instant. Yeah, know, we're helping that client out. So. And that's huge for people, right? Because they've dealt with people, or um, either if it was a remodel or anything else, they they, they had issues with, and uh, so they did the work. Now they're trying to call them back. They can't get the hold of the contractor, right? Or they can't, you know, how they do. And they still got to come out this time, but they don't. Yeah, and it's very frustrating. Sure. So I put an ease to that. Right? Mm -hmm. That's that's not gonna happen with us. Sure. Do you do you uh, present? Stuff is a finance price, I and mean, we're talking forty thousand dollars. Or, I mean, I know you're in a high rent part of the world. Mm -hmm. So, do do you guys not push financing, or what's your approach? We do. Um, I don't know if we push it. Yeah. Do you uh, present it? Like absolutely. a lot of oh, you like so when you do your options, you do you present it at no, no, okay, no, not right away. Yeah, I I do use it more as a closing tool. Okay, and sometimes people just don't have the money. Right, you fork out that kind of cash, you know. Yeah. So uh, maybe I'll do it sooner. You know, you kind of in a conversation, kind of know where they stand as well, right? Um, but when you talk to them, they'll yeah. tell you a lot about their life. Um, sometimes I'll just break it down to payments, so I'll give them an option, and as well as I'll give them a monthly option, mm -hmm. right? Um, but if it's, you know, somebody says, yeah, then let's do it. Yeah. And uh, then I'll let them know and be like, okay, great. Um, by the way, we do offer 18 months, not just financing, if that's something you want to take advantage of. Um, there shall be paying penalties, pay off anytime you want, you know. Yeah. Um, is that sometimes good to go for it? Sometimes yeah. they don't. Yeah. Um, people that have a lot of money usually do. That's interesting. Yeah. It's free money. Yeah. Their money is growing in the bank. Right? Yeah. And they're in investments. They don't have to pull. Right. Um. So yeah. Is that the popular one? Yeah. The no interest eighteen months. Okay. Yeah. You don't do a lot of long term. Okay. Yeah. I think I've done maybe two. Wow. Long term. Yeah. Long term meaning sixty months. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Ninety eight percent, I say, for me. Yeah. So Eighteen months, no interest. How do you handle if I'm like, boy, I, you know, I'm sweating here. It's a lot of money, right? You know, forty thousand dollars for me is a lot of money. Um, I, I just need time. I just need to think about this. I need to process this. They're basically trying to get you out the door, right? Just to like yeah. to maybe or just breathe. Yeah. You know, again, I got I called out for. I thought it was just a quick toilet repair. Yeah. How do you handle that if I go? I just I just need to think about this. How do you handle that? Yeah, I acknowledge it. It's like if it was me, I need to think about it too. Yeah. I get it. It's a lot of money, right? Did not expect that. Wasn't ready for it. I get it, right? Um, may I ask, is there any anything else that's holding you back other than, you know, just the shock of it yeah. all, right? And if you go, no, no, that's it. Let's just say they go with that, right? So now we know this is legit. This is what the real reason, right? Because we want to... I want to think about it could mean a lot of different things, as we know. Sure. It could be, get out of my house. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're crazy. Yeah. It could be, really, I need to think about it, or I need to talk to a spouse, we'll just sit down, go over budget, right? Yeah. 
Um, it just, there's so many different things. Sure. So you got to isolate that, mm-hmm. right? By acknowledging it and asking, is there anything else right. that's holding you back other than this? Right. You know, sometimes it'll be like, well, the money or uh, whatever it might be. Right. Um, and I'm like, oh, well, maybe I can give your wife a, maybe a, just a few minutes, you know, we can step outside, you know, uh, definitely want to start addressing the certain things. If they're okay with that, I'll step out. Yeah. Yeah. Give them 10, 15 minutes. Right. You know, just come get me. Or they will say, no, no, we want to talk about it later. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I get it. How about we just start with this little thing right here? Right. We're playing the flag. Yeah. So just kind of step back a little bit. Let's just start here. Get this out of the way. Yeah. Whatever it might be. Right. And then we do the prep. And then, you know, we wow. I was going to say, do you you tell everyone what your prep is, what you guys do for jobs? Oh, my God. It's impressive. Yeah, it is. Um, When we prep the home for for a repipe, we're going to be going to the crawl space in and out. Uh, We cover the hardwood floors with Shuby. It's a very thick foam-like wall-to-wall, tape top, nice and tight. Anywhere we're going to be working, so it's the full bathroom, wall-to-wall-to-wall. Kitchen, hallway. If you have carpet, we have the sticky uh, red stuff <laughs> like covering yeah but um we cover everything really nice and tight uh we put a zip wall around the crawl space right so the dust doesn't come in and out and that's a big selling point for me as well when i talk about how we're going to take care of their home mm-hmm. you know that's part of our process no i can't say nobody but most don't go to this those set lengths i haven't seen anybody do that yeah ever yeah to this extent and people see that you're here to take care of their home. Yeah. They're used to a drop cough. Yeah. Right? And that's it. A dirty drop cough. I've been used it a hundred times. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when they see that, it's nice and clean. Right? Um, so like I said, we're getting started on something. Yeah. And they're like, okay, yeah, I can handle this. We'll go from there. Right. You know, then we do the prep. They get wild. Um, and then it comes down to our project managers, technicians, installers, and everybody else. Mm-hmm. And the other, the real reason that I can get to that for a million. I can tell you that right now. Um, because without them, uh, it wouldn't happen. And and they're great. And they're great with clients. All of them. Yeah. I mean, our interview process, I don't know how they pick them, but all these guys are just, just great. Just great with, with customers. You know, they're super friendly. Um, and the clients just fall in love with them. Yeah. A lot of times I'll come back Maybe for a change order or something, I'm, I always ask them, like, how's the crew? Oh, my gosh, I want to adopt this guy. Never. <laughs> yeah. That's the feedback we get. Yeah, that's great. Right? Right. Um, we have a client for life. Yeah. At that point, right? Right, right. Uh, let's say we started with something. The, uh, the technician that, that took over the job, the project manager, will be there. He'll take that thing out, you know, show it to the client. Like, this is what it looks like on this side. Yeah. Let's see what the rest. At this point... Nine and ten times they're ready just to get it all done. Do it all. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but definitely you want to get started with something. Sure. You know, sure. that's key. How uh, you know, another objection, it's easy can because again, with plumbing, you know, with HVAC, they do a lot of good job of setting up. I need a husband and wife or both decision maker type things. Mm-hmm. Plumbing's hard. Like I just oh, you know, I'm I'm home, my wife's at work, I'm just gonna call, have this quick plumbing repair done, and all of a sudden we're sitting hours later and staring at the forty thousand dollar bit. Um, how do you handle, oh, I really need to talk to my wife about this. This is a lot of money. Like, do you, you say, can we call her up or how? Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you mind if we give him a call? Yeah. You know, um, and go from there, you know? Yeah. And sometimes, you know, they, they'll talk and I'm like, and I ask them be like, Hey, if you don't mind putting them on speakerphone or maybe I can speak to them as well. So I can go over kind of what we talked about. Right. right. Because I want to talk to them. I don't want them talking to themselves on right. need. Because it's like the hidden telephone, right? Things going to get missed. Yeah. So I really try to get on that phone. Okay. With with the other decision maker. Right. So, um, but yeah, not always do you, do you get it, right? Yeah, it's just sure. It's not realistic. But, sure, but, sure, but, sure. How about, uh, do you, um, I mean, in this circumstance, I... This, this doesn't quite fit what we've been talking about, but other bids, do you, do you get a lot of that where you walk in and it's like, oh, I've got 
two or three other bids for a whole house repipe. I know I need it done. Yeah. Right. So how do you how do you address how do you handle those sort of situations? I ask them, um, what well, uh, what are you looking for in a pump? You know, somebody that's going to be coming in and doing work at your house. Yeah. And then I let them tell me how to what to say. Okay. Right. And then they usually want. I just want somebody that's going to do good work. That's not going to leave my house a mess. You know. Somebody that is good, you know, they would say all that. And yeah. I'm like, well, we got all that. Yeah. And this is what we do. Mm-hmm. Right. I'll even show them pictures. I was just yeah. going to ask about pictures. Yeah. Do. Yeah. So I'll have some pictures of our prep. Yeah. You know, this is what we do. Yeah. Right. This is the, how we take care of your home. Right. If this was my grandma's house, right. This is how I would take care of it. This is how we take care of your home. Yeah. Um, then we just go from there. Right. Oh. Or just swap. Wow. them as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm excited about it. Sure. I mean, um, you're not going to close them all. No, I know you. I mean, I know you're good, but you're not going to close them all. Absolutely not. <laughs> what's your What's your follow up then like? So like maybe maybe we fix that little repair, right? Because you got to move forward with the correct. And okay, we close that. You know, thank you. Will you call behind and go? Hey, have you thought about any moving forward the whole house? It's still an issue, or do you just not? Now, what do we do? We just replace the toilet and that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they got an issue. They know it's a forty thousand dollars issue. It's a big issue. Yes. So with customers that are kinds that did work with us, even just a little bit, yeah, we have bigger issues. Absolutely, right. You know, um, and I'll ask them. You know, before I leave, after I did that work, be like, "Hey, what's a good time to follow up? You know, when when do you think you'll have a chance to, yeah, you know, to make some decisions? Right. You know, well, it's got to get done. So probably within this week." Yeah, and or watch it as tight, you know, whatever. You need to wait a couple months, eighteen months financing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, yeah. So you don't push too hard. It sounds like I don't. I mean, you give them a response that makes sense, but you're not. No, <clears throat> right? No, um, I think those days are over. Yeah, people don't have patience for that. Right, and it turns them off. Sure, sure. People don't like salespeople. Yeah. <laughs> they just don't. They don't want to be pushed into making a decision. Right. They don't want to be able to make the decision themselves. Right. Right. Um, you uh, let's okay. So let's say let's backtrack. You sold it. You sold me on on it. Right. The, on the big the forty thousand dollar job. You had, we had talked earlier when you were looking at the house. I still got that old water here. You know. Mm-hmm. Do you even push for that at that point, or you go okay? I'm happy with this big project, and I don't want to set oh, them no. out. All right, so how do you pivot from I'm closed on that $40,000 job? So the first thing I do is is call uh, my project manager, right, my yeah. project tech, and I make sure he meets me there, right? So I don't leave until he shows up. Okay. You're still making small talk. Yeah. I might just go to the car with what I need to do, you know, because I need to let dispatch know that I need him here and so on, make something. Like yeah. But I stay close by. Um, then I get, he comes in, I introduce him to the client. I walk him through everything me and the client talked about, right? Together. Yeah. He gives the number. This is what this is the the process. This is how we're gonna get started. We're doing the prep today. We're gonna to open some walls here and there. Um I like you get it started right away. All right. Once they say yes. Oh yeah. Now you're going, okay, we'll come back in a, in a couple of days because then it lets people think, right? Yeah. No, we're getting going, right? Yeah. Um and my project manager, so they already know what to do, right? I mean They'll go, they'll start working on everything, the walls are open, and they are literally with the client there, you know, and they see something else that's not so related. That could be water or gas. Yeah. Like, hey, take a look at this. They will say it. Oh, yeah. They, they set it up. Mm-hmm. Right? Or like, hey, uh, when I was replacing this section right here, I noticed these water lines right here, you know, and then I noticed those that maybe Alex wasn't able to see because everything was hidden. And but I can get him out here, you know, just to let you know. Oh, so what you're we, you're gone at that point. Well, this is two three days in. Oh, I said this I gotcha. and, and like a revive takes about a week. A okay, full revive understood with everything. Right? Gotcha. So about two three days in into the work. Okay, they call me out. Yeah, back out after talking to the client. Gotcha. So at this point, they see how we work. They love us, right? Everybody's respectful. They clean up at the end of each day. Yeah, sweep everything. Uh, and so the client already loves everything, right? Yeah. Everything that's been promised is, yeah. is getting taken care of. And then, yeah. So they come back and we yeah. have more options. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How often does that happen? 
Um, we like it to happen 100% of the time. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I put a number on it. 70, 80%? Is that oh, right? I'd like, yeah, that second thing. Right. Most of them, yes. Okay. <laughs> but because they yeah. already know, right? Yeah. And they're like, oh, must we just get it all done once and for all. Right. Right. Um, but some, sometimes they don't, you know, they're like, they're tapped out. Yeah. Or we revisit this in a year. Yeah. Right. But at least you have it documented. Right. 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 Do you get, so, yeah. Do you guys do a lot of outbounding to old customers that go, yeah, they did a lot with you, but they didn't do that in one particular thing because they're oh, I'm just tired of spending money on plumbing. Like, yeah. you, you guys, good, you know, so that's a, that's an easy lead. Well, I want to say easy, but it's a good lead for you because you know them, you had the rapport. Yeah. And they were like, okay, I know it's time to do this. So, do you guys do that pretty frequently or not so much? Not so much. Okay. Um, I mean, with our marketing, mm. we do send out a lot of cards. So, they have these little reminders. Yeah. You know, mm. through marketing more. Um, I know our CSR does, do they do call mm -hmm. after we go out there? Right. You know, to, to kind of follow up and mm -hmm. see how everything went. Um, but yeah, if they're saying they're a year out. To be yeah, honest, I, I don't. Sure, you got it. Could, it could be, right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. always something to get better at, but um, um, becomes a lot. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> you, I was gonna say you've got many, many more opportunities to, yeah. to to chase for sure. Yeah. Um, kind of in wrapping it up, what would you? What advice do you have? I mean, you're a good sized company, you got a lot of new people that come in. What advice might you have for a new plumbing advisor on how how to be successful? Uh, Relate to the client, build a relationship. Mm -hmm. Number one, don't think when you go into a client's house, don't think about selling something. Don't think about selling a big job. Go in there thinking, how can I help this client long term? Mm -hmm. Right. So, not to keep going now. Let's take care of the issue at hand and how we can prevent other things from happening in the near future. Right. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Um, if you, if you can do that, you, you're going to be, you're going to do just fine. Yeah. And money comes with it right. automatically. Uh, you take care of the people, people like you, you're honest with them. Don't BS. People are smart. If you don't know something, tell me you don't know it. And right. Let it check. Right. I don't know a lot at all compared to a lot of my technicians, but also other field advisors, right? I really don't. You know, I'm learning every single day. I learn something new about something. And if a client asks me about something and I don't know, I'm like, you know what? I'm not sure. Let me call my field supervisor, you know? Let me let me ask him. I'm, I'm really not sure. Yeah. I have no problem asking. Yeah. You know, letting them know that I don't know. Right. Honesty. That's, it's not a big, it's really not a big deal. People get scared to not know. Sure. Don't be. Yeah. There's no reason to. I like it. People appreciate it. That's good for especially someone newer. Yep. Yeah. I like that. Why do you think people ultimately buy from you, spend $40,000 on something they had no idea that they were going to need to spend $40,000 on? Um, like I said, I think it starts purely with, with our team, 100%. Um, the good work they do. And when I tell them, well, this amazing work we do, it's backed up. I mean, you know, um, if they didn't do all everything that they do and wow the client, I don't think I'll be as successful as I am. There's no way. Right. Right. Um, but it all starts from the bottom up, you know, with all the guys that are all hands off. Yeah. 100%. That's great. All right. Last question. What motivates you to, to, to do as well, to be as focused, to locked in your process? Obviously, homeowners can mess it up and you got all these checkpoints. So, so what motivates you to stay so locked in and, and perform at such a high level? I am competitive by nature. <laughs> Um, and I like nice things. I like, you know, I, I wanted to own a home. I own a home, right? I, I want to travel. Um, I want to make sure my kids are taken care of. Yeah. Uh, I like nice things. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Right. Yeah. 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 It's probably able to do that, you know, and you got to hustle. So yeah. Very cool. Actually, one more thing. What, what's it like coming? You've been to a couple of these events now, right? Galas, expos. Yeah. What's it like being at an event where you've got, you know, I don't know, 1,600 people, you got all these high performers? It's kind, of, it's kind of fun, and you're with all your, well, not all, but a lot of your, your fellow teammates. What's it like? Oh, I love it. Yeah. It's an, it's a nice to just get away for one and to be with your, your work family right now. Yeah. 
uh, and meet other people in the industry, learn something from them. I mean, there's things I learned yesterday, just being on the panel, yeah, you know, um, from other guys that are sitting next to me. Yeah. Um, so it's, you're always learning and it's, it's cool. I mean, this is a great event. Yeah. So very good. Well, Alex, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Support for this podcast comes from Shuby. Keeping your client's floors clean can be a hassle, but it doesn't have to be when you use Shuby's high quality shoe covers and surface protection products on every job. Our products are specifically designed to showcase your professionalism and a minimal cost per job. Made from strong, durable materials that won't rip or tear, our products ensure maximum protection. We know that your time is valuable, and that's why we make it our mission to provide you with the tools you need to get the job done quickly and efficiently. So why wait? Visit www.shuby.com to check out some of our great products and use code SC10 to get 10% off all Shuby products. Bradford White. Bradford White is for the professional, which is why they developed the For the Pro mobile app with resources and tools at your fingertips. The contractor app is loaded with a variety of information and features to support the professional service installation of Bradford White products. With For the Pro app, users can scan a Bradford White product barcode and quickly check warranty status while also having access to all related documents, including I.O. manuals and troubleshooting guides. Contractors can also chat with the technical services team within the app or access training videos while on site. The For the Pro app is available for both iOS and Android devices through the Apple and Google App Stores. Download it today. The Successful Contractor Podcast is part of the Certain Path family. Certain Path builds successful home service businesses and has for 23 years. We do it by providing contractors with a proven path to success professional coaching, software solutions, and a member community of over 1,000 contractors just like you. Doubling your sales with a 20% net profit and an inspiring company culture is all possible. Let us show you the way. With CertainPath, success is made certain. Visit www.mycertainpath.com for more information.